hello. Wow, you guys are fast. Oh my gosh, it's hot in here. Oh. I had to go pee. Calm down, woman. Gosh. And I had to get myself some iced tea. Hello, how is everybody? It's just you two? You two are the only ones that love me tonight? I see how it is. <laughs> oh, there goes the live. Prepare for the masses of love. Oh my gosh, people. Hold it, please. So as I'm doing this, I'm like, pulling out more and more things and I'm like this is pretty bad that I've uh spent my money on this junk and now I'm like it's junk I wish I didn't buy this junk <sighs> hello Susie hi Sherry I love you too chow hi Susan hi Alejandra hello James Hello, Noelle. How are you doing, Noelle? How's your crafty hand? Non-crafty hand. Hi, Belinda. Leah Jade, you need to come home now. If you can watch your mommy's live from the neighbors, you can bring your butt home. Hello, Jody. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Candace. Hi, Linda. Hi, Belinda. Okay, Belinda, it's under. Oh, man, I just asked um, Cha where it's at. Zushi Hushi Spread. Okay. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Connie. Hi, Belinda. Ryan doesn't have a YouTube channel. He has, he's a member, he's a contributor in our Foiling Snobs Club Facebook group. And so you go under, Chow, what's the name of the folder again? I just slipped my mind after I just asked her about it. Um, but you go and it will show Nancy's lives, Tracy's lives, whoever did a live, Karen's live, Ryan's live, and you just click on their folder. Hello, Cheryl from Washington State, all the way across the country. Hi, Amalia. Yeah, you go under topic, sorry. <laughs> so if you go on our Foiling Snobs Club page on Facebook, um, there's a, yeah, it's on Foiling Snobs. There's um, albums posts, announcements, and topics, and files. So it's under topics. So we're trying to keep files for the SVG and the PDF downloads you guys have been building. And then topics is where our videos are. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Joyce. Don't start, Stacy. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to have to put you in timeout. <laughs> I have a pretty large list here. And the more I look around my room, the more I'm like, yep, got to put that on the list. Got to put that on the list. <laughs> so this is just going to be part one of my list, I think. So let me start this off while we're waiting for more people to jump on here by saying... Um, this is by no means to bash any particular products. That's not what this video is about. So I just want you guys to think about two things here. Number one, um, we always talk about this in our videos. The world is hard enough right now, right? Our 
going outside is a very scary place right now. Not only physically because of the illness, but just people are very mean, right? So um, you can't control what's going on in the world. All you can do is control yourself and what makes you happy. So anything that bothers you, talk about it. Um, but just remember, you can only control what you can control. So whatever happened yesterday happened yesterday. You cannot go back in time and change it. So worrying about it today is only taking time away from your happiness yesterday and today. So, um, you know, this is words that I kind of live by is everything happens for a reason. It is what it is. You accept it. You move on past it. You learn a lesson from it, right? So that's what all of this is. So I don't really have any regrets. I just learned from them. Secondly, um, I want to come to the table with solutions. I don't like when people complain, but they don't come with solutions. So as I make recommendations about things that I don't like, I want to tell you why I don't like them. And then I want to try to bring to the table a solution for you. I may not have solutions for everything here, but I think I have solutions for some of these issues, which I've learned through purchasing these things. So if it helps you save a couple dollars or make a decision on something you've been thinking about purchasing, um, hopefully, hopefully it helps. Okay. Hi, Renee. Hi, Roberta. Um, Roberta, the affiliate codes are now under announcements. Uh, ciao. Help, Roberta. Chow is our know-all be-all. I love Chow. She's so organized and keeps everything on point for us. Okay. So now that I've done my positive rant post for the day, I mean, a lot of you guys like email me and they're like, how do you do it? How do you like work and do crafting and take care of your kids because I don't waste my time on things that don't need to have my time wasted. I'll give you a perfect example. This is going to sound very cheesy to you, but it's like I make my bed every morning. I don't like a messy bed and that starts my day. So part of it is I just have a little bit of OCD and organization, but let me just show you an example of things. So my kids all know, like when I do laundry, that um, I will wash the clothes and dry the clothes and then I'll bring the basket up. I'll dump the basket on the bed and they each have to grab their clothes, fold them and put them away. Mommy is not their maid, okay? But when I'm loading the dishwasher, so this is the dishwasher drawer. It's something as simple as this and I know this is kind of cheesy. Okay, the cabinet over here houses the glasses. Okay, the cabinet over here houses the bowls and plates. So when I'm loading the dishwasher, I literally load the bowls and plates on this side of the dishwasher and the glasses are loaded on this side of the dishwasher so that when I unload the dishwasher, it's three less steps to put the dishes from this side. They go in the right side of the cabinet. That is how organized my brain is. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that is how I do things. So it's just, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's something that takes two less minutes out of my day. Now times that by 10 times a day, that's 20 minutes a day that I just saved myself that I can do crafting. I'm just saying, just saying. It's, it's a little bit of OCD. I mean, I'm not like a neat freak. Like I don't like turn the lights on and off 10 times OCD before I can leave the house. And I don't like, I mean, my kitchen is messy. I will say that, but I, my house is clean. And the fact that my children put things away, everything is in its place. I, what did Ryan say yesterday? Mace, Mace, Maison something. Where's Ryan? But everything in its place. And it's kind of the same thing with my crafting supplies. You guys kind of laugh because my videos, I'm cleaning up stuff and I'm putting them away as I go. Because I don't, listen, the desk does get messy. But I don't like leaving everything out. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Let's start with my list here. Um, okay, I'm going to start with kind of the obvious stuff. And I'm not going to bring it into the camera um, the first one is my Toto machine. I did just sell my Toto machine. So Diana, if you're on here watching, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> but 
Um, it served its purpose while I had it to try it out, to experiment with it. But the Toto machine for me was just too big, too cumbersome. And um, I jumped on the bandwagon. I spent a lot of money on it. And I recently just sold it. So thank you, Diana, for buying that. And I hope you're part of the channel. And I hope you're enjoying it. So what would be my replacement to the Toto? Um, I would say... Um, the Mini Mink and the Gemini Junior. And I know you're going to spend more money on the Mini Mink and the Gemini Junior, but they're both smaller and serve their purposes better than that Toto. The Toto is a giant machine. You have to watch my old videos. It's a giant table size machine that was a, um, like a Sizzix, like a embossing machine and a hot foil machine. It's in Europe. It's in the UK. It's T-O-D-O -O if you want to look it up. But that was probably my biggest spent money machine. I did learn some things from it, but it was humongous. So I wish I hadn't bought that. <clears throat> the second thing I'm going to say and not really show is excess um, ribbon, paper, and flowers. And somebody just said, oh, crafting OCD doesn't sound like us. We all have kind of full set syndrome problem and anything that was cool like pattern paper Especially when Michael's had their buy five for $20. I'm loading five packs of paper in the cart and I'm never going to use it. So I have stopped for the most part. Not completely. But I have stopped buying. There's Ryan. Ryan, what did you say? Mason something about putting everything in its place. I want to say Mason Blanc, but that's not it. That's a restaurant around here. <laughs> Mason Plaz? Um... So I have stopped buying, I'm going to phrase it this way, cheap paper. Okay. Maison Place. Okay. So I have stopped buying cheap papers, how I'm going to phrase that. So if I see a paper sale, I'm not buying it. If it's cheap paper, I'm not buying it. I have an idea what I'm going to use the paper for before I buy it. So I have stopped buying cheap paper Unless I have a specific reason or I know I'm going to buy that paper. And really, the only paper I buy now is honestly my Stampin' Up! paper. I don't buy paper anymore. Um, I'm In terms of pattern paper, I mean. Um, I have a whole bunch of ribbons. I never use ribbons. Um, flower petals. I never use those. I, don't, I have all that crap. I don't buy any of it anymore. Glitter. I don't buy any glitter anymore. Hi, Wilma. Um, so... The last thing I put on my list is washi tape. I don't use washi tape. I don't know why I bought washi tape. So you'll see when I use washi tape now, it's really just to go on the back of the envelopes just so I can use it up. But um, unnecessary ribbon, paper, paper flowers. Yeah, pattern paper and washi tape is on my don't need it. Don't buy it anymore. I, you guys, I went to Michael's the other day and walked around for half an hour and didn't buy crap. Because I put these things into my mind that I don't need them anymore. Glitter. I don't buy it anymore. Okay? So, that's the first easy stuff away. Okay? I saw your, your posting, Don. Um, yeah, Susie, if you go under foiling, hot foiling, I think, you're going to see like three or four videos of Nancy using that. Okay, that's the easy stuff. Now, I'm going to get into some of the sensitive stuff. Now, again, let me disclose this by saying... A lot of these things I bought in trying out um, because everybody else was doing it. And I want to give you solutions. So I'm not coming to the table with complaints necessarily, but alternative solutions, okay? All right, so let's start with the first one, which we've all been talking about. I literally have a list over here that I have to remember to cross off. Um, nouveau Texture Paste. Oh, Nuvo. Nuvo, Nuvo, Nuvo. So I have three, ten canisters of this paste. And I did a video several years ago, and Nuvo contacted me. So when you pull your lid off of these, they do have a shelf life. If you have a cardboard lining in here, your Nuvo, post has, your Nuvo paste has probably already dried out, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And I know there's videos that say, put distilled water in it, put glycerin in it. It don't work, throw it out. Just throw it out, okay? But if this is cardboard and not foam, it's going to dry out. Now, my only suggestion is to get some uh, press and seal. Keep the foil lid on there. But these all eventually dry out. 
Okay, now this one is, can you hear that? This is going in the garbage, okay? So it's a waste. And I have several of them, and I don't even use them because I know they're going to dry out. Like, it just bothers me. So this one's not there yet. This one's still pretty moist. But um, put a piece of press and seal on there to protect them. But more importantly, use them. Get them out and use them because they are going to dry out. You're going to waste your money. If you don't have any and you're looking at what you want to buy, I would suggest these... Um, metallic gilding polishes these are the first two that i ever bought and these are probably three years old and they are still gooey i don't even want to stick my finger in there see that and these things i'm telling you are three or four years old they they create a natural skin on the top which protects them i don't know if it's natural it's not living but <laughs> they create a skin on the top um, there is another uh, foam lid inside, but just the way, I guess because they're in glass jars and the way that the lids go on, they don't dry out. So I would suggest buying any of these metallic gilding polishes, the opal polishes. Um, they're all pretty much the same, and you can use them in the same way. You run them through stencils. You get a texture to them. They're metallic. They have opal ones they glitter ones so there's all different ones you can buy so my alternative purchase option would be get rid of the nouveau mousse and get the gilding polishes okay so these are great these are these are great to go through stencils um they're water-based so yeah you can watercolor with them um yeah and stacy found a joanne's coupon today so um i really like those these like this one's go right in the garbage Okay. Um, yeah. So there we go. That's option number one. Washi tape I talked about. All right. This one, actually, uh, Stacy, Tracy, and Chow and I were talking about yesterday. Now, don't get mad at me. <laughs> Ryan, the trash can's right next to me. Um, this is the Catherine Pooler black ink, okay? As you guys know, I bought a whole bunch of the other Catherine Pooler inks, and I've been using them galore. But this black ink stains. It stains, and it's never going to come back, okay? So, if you don't mind using it on red rubber stamps, it's a great deep black ink. It's got a spongy ink pad. But it will stain your photopolymer stamps so bad. So I never use this black ink. Okay. I love. <laughs> Ryan said, have you seen Catherine Pooler stamps, girl? <laughs> it is archival. But I would say use it. It doesn't impact the stamp, Wilma. But the reason we buy photopolymer stamps is so we can see through them. And you can't see through your stamp anymore once it turns black. So I don't like this black ink. It's not my go-to black ink. I'm going to recommend, if you like this kind of black, spongy, super black ink, to go with the VersaFine Claire and Nocturne. If you need an archival black ink, then use the Ranger archival ink. Two different inks for two different purposes. But I would say you're better off with these two ink pads than this one ink pad. Yeah, I mean, great for red rubber stamps, but if you have clear stamps, don't put this ink on your clear stamps. So I actually put this in Leah's pile. <laughs> this is so funny. So, you know, Leah gets all my stuff I don't want or hand-me-downs or whatever, and I put this in her ink pile. She brought it back and threw it at the desk, and she goes, I don't want this ink. Brutus Monroe Raven ink is um, for Copic coloring is when I bring that one in. It's a good black ink. You can use that ink for almost everything. You can use it for water coloring. You can use it for um, Copics. This is a very good ink. It just, it, because it's a felt pad, it takes a little more effort to get it to be super black. The VersaFine Claire is a lot easier to use if you're doing silhouette images. Yeah, Leah literally was like... I don't want this. And I was like, okay, then. Guess it's not going to work on her either. <laughs> okay. 
But I love all of the other Catherine Puller inks. Absolutely. Just the black. Dude, that's some tough black. All right. Next on my list. <clears throat> all right. Raise your hand if you spent $50 on these guys. <clears throat> so if you don't know what these are... These are the great grandpappy <laughs> to these, okay? Okay, they're very heavy, stifling, stippling stencil brushes. Um, I did use them a few times, clearly, but what they're designed to do is when you are using a stencil... <clears throat> This is, this is Leah's note to me when I'm filming. <laughs> um, so, and I think um, Ken Oliver likes to use these, okay? I, they're heavy, they're long, and honestly, because of you gotta store them in a drawer or something, you probably just forget about them. <laughs> Oh my God, that ink stinks. The ink is also on my list. Ew, it smells like fish food. Ew. Anyway, well, I am doing seaweed here. It's appropriate. But this is what they're for. They're stencil brushes. But, um, so again, somebody took this invention and improved it a little bit by going with the makeup brushes. And so, like I said, these are the great granddaddy of these. So my alternative solution is you can literally get five colored ones on Amazon. They're in my Amazon shop. There's actually two different color families you can get. I I just like I like these for a lighter touch if you're doing stenciling or ink blending. If you're going to want a heavier touch, I know um, Simon just did a really good video comparing the two, then you want to use the Ranger distressing tool, um, the mini distress tool. This guy here. This guy here, okay? So both of these work great. I have one for a heavier application and one for a lighter application. But these guys, gonna go in the donate box. I hope you don't mind that they're a little inky. And, um... We literally paid $50 for these things. Okay, stencil brushes, cross it off the list. It's a nasty scented card, okay. Um, Ryan brought this one up the other day. Ryan, I added it to my list just for you. So when we got this gla Tim Holtz glass mat, if you don't have one of these, you definitely are going to appreciate it as a crafter. It protects your work surface. It's, it is super easy to clean up. I don't like the glare on it, but it is what it is. I do like that there's a white surface here. It does come in a right and a left-handed size. Um, yes, Belinda, I like those too, the dome-shaped sponges. But they, when they sold this, they sold... Look, I got ink all over my hands already. They sold this extra kit... And you could get a replacement non-stick pad, okay, which you stick down, which I might as well put on here since I found it now because I don't know where it was in the drawer over here. The other one, like Ryan said, the edges would curl up and it would get all boogered up and, the, and just be a pain in the ass. And this one will too. It will lose its stick and it will curl up. But it came, I paid extra for this ruler tool. Okay, and this scraper tool. These are not worth the money. <laughs> okay, I've never used the ruler tool, maybe once or twice when I first got it. The scraper tool I very rarely use because this cleans up so easily that I really don't need it. And uh, as you can see, I uh, just brought out the spare mat because I've never needed it. Um, so, yeah, just another one of these things. I would definitely recommend the mat. I don't think you need the little extra accessories. And like I said, unless you think you're going to use it, they were just not for me. 
All right, let's see here. Well, Karen says she uses it, so that's good. Um, well, no, it does remove. It's like, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's not really glue, but it is a non-stick surface. Okay, next thing on my list. Um, I demoed these a month or two back. Spectrum Noir came out with these alcohol inks. Now, they were a little misleading with how they tried to demonstrate them. They demonstrated these as alcohol inks. Like um, the Tim Holtz alcohol inks or the Bria Reese alcohol inks or the Marabou alcohol inks. That is not what these are, okay? These are the refills to the Spectrum Noir alcohol markers because previously they did not offer refills. So now you can get refills on them. They are very expensive. If you're going to buy alcohol markers, I'm going to recommend two ways to go. One... If you really want to invest in them, buy the Copics, and you can buy either the, the Copic Chows or the Copic, what are the regular ones called? Copic Sketches or Copic Chows. One is just smaller and lesser expensive than the other. They both have the chisel and the brush nib, so you don't lose on quality. Like I said, the Chows are just a little bit cheaper. I prefer them because they're rounded. Um, the Copic Sketches are a little bigger, and buy a refill. So if you're going to invest in alcohol markers, they're very expensive, but you can buy the refill in them, and you they're the number one brand of alcohol markers, and everybody knows that, okay? You can't, you can't, it's the Ferrari of alcohol markers. You cannot top this, okay? However, if you are looking for a price alternative, I have shown a couple videos. I definitely like my Arteza markers because they are inexpensive. They are price alternative. No, there's no refill for them, but let's face it. I'm probably never going to need a refill because I don't color that much. And because the markers are so cheap, I can just buy new markers. But I don't recommend buying these markers and buying the refills. Okay, because you have two other alternatives there that I think would be a better fit. Um, they tried to, like I said, promote these as, well, you can use them on Yupo paper and do like all the other fun things that all the other alcohol inks do. That is not correct. These do not move the same way. You know what's cool about them? It is cool that they have these little dropper things. I kind of do wish the other alcohol ink companies did this, but don't buy it because of the dropper, all right? So I bought them. I'm stuck with them. I'm just trying to save you some money, people. Okay, that's my two cents on those things. <clears throat> and if you guys, um, you know, feel free to throw your two cents in if you agree or disagree. I like to hear everybody's opinion. Yeah, Jean, I have mine. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have about 10 or 11 sets, and I bought them when AC Moore had a huge sellout of them, and you got them for like $5 a pack or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Um, I talked about this the other day, too. All right, first of all, neon inks. Okay. Not that I don't think neon is cool. I'm a 70s, 80s child. I think that neon inks are very cool, okay? But there's only a certain amount of application you can do with neon inks. They are a very short-lived lifespan on what you can do with neon inks, okay? So I don't wish, I wish I had not bought neon inks because I think I used them a whole two times and, you know, you can't use them on black paper. It's not like they glow in the dark or anything. So I wish I had not bought neon inks. I really don't have an alternative for you. And man, that green one smells like fish. Ew, it's some funky smell in that one. Oh. All right, moving on. All right. 
Um, and you guys know I do love all things Hero Arts. But these ombre ink pads, and Nancy's got a lot of money in these ombre ink pads. If you don't know what ombre ink pads are, it's supposed to be three different colors of ink. This is a newer style ink pad because they put the gap in between the ink pads. But the older ones didn't have that gap. So the older ones <laughs> don't look so neon anymore. It's so close. I mean, um, ombre anymore. It's so close that when you actually stamp out with it, it just looks like it's all the same color. So I really like them when they first came out, but if you have the older ones, see how close they are. All of that ink just kind of bleeds together and you end up losing a lot of that ombre. And I have quite a few of these. Now, like I said, the newer ones are spaced out apart. And this one is so contrasting in color, you can see the difference. But just be careful of buying these guys because great idea. I know if you're short on inks, you like, you know, I get three different ink pads in here, but just be careful of that. And I don't know, I've never had to re-ink one. Let's face it, I don't really spend my money on re-inkers, you guys, you guys know that. Okay, we crossed that off the list. I hope this is helping some of you guys out. Let's talk about glue real quick. All right, I um, Ryan was showing the other day glue. I'm going to say this. If you're like me and... Well, Auntie Teresa, mine's probably like three years old too. <laughs> Where are we different, Ryan? Ryan, you like the uh, ombre ink pads? Okay, if you're like me and you watch a lot of YouTubers, which I do, I watch, oh, reinkers, yeah. Uh, well, you use them. I don't really use them. I watch Jennifer McGuire, Christina Warner, um, Gina Kay, um, you know, a lot of um, YouTubers. I wouldn't be a YouTuber if I didn't watch a lot of YouTubers. And did you notice there was this kind of glue phase they all went through? So everybody was using this glue right it was everybody got to use the tombow and then everybody went to the multi matte medium i've got a ton of these and then everybody went to this uh nuvo glue and now everybody is on the um what's the new connect gina k connect glue right that's what everybody's using. Well, I can tell you, I just had this conversation with Chow and Tracy and Stacy last night, and we have all decided that these are all like, all right. Um, the glue that we've been using is the berry glue Ryan showed yesterday, or this art glitter glue. Is this art glitter glue is very? It's I think it's the same as the berry glue. Um, but I think the berry glue is a little bit cheaper. But this glue dries super fast and it's super strong and it drives clear. So this is really good. I do like the mono, especially when I'm doing stuff with Leah because it does give a little time to wiggle. But if you're pretty good, you don't need that wiggle. You just you just slap this on and go. It's stuck. Okay. So, um, yeah. I list, by the way, um... The stuff that I'm giving as alternatives are listed in my Amazon shop. So it's under adhesive. But this is really good glue. And then I buy the refill and I just keep refilling these. And they have a little fine tip. And I just put my little my little needle in there to keep it from clogging up. Okay. But these two, I don't buy these anymore. And um, yeah, there's my, there's my glue story. So it doesn't always pay to jump on the bandwagon based on what everybody else is doing. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. We're, getting, we're getting down on the list here. Texture paste. Okay. I will say this texture paste is really, really old. Okay. I think I used it in the beginning with stencils and I colored over it, but now there's so many alternative colored texture paste. Like I said, you're better off buying the... Um, gilding polish here from Cosmic Shimmer that I don't use the plain white texture paste anymore. There's no reason for it. However, I do buy 
Rangers Texture Paste Gloss. And if you are into foiling, FSC in the house. Okay. And you have a mink machine or a laminating machine. This is really the only stuff I stock up on anymore. Um, it doesn't dry out. It lasts freaking forever. Um, you can use it as a glue. You can use it as a decoupage. Um, but this works great. Putting it through stencils, letting it dry, and then um, putting the foil over it. So where this and even the texture paste matte has that matte finish and it's just like, eh, you know, it's got this kind of rough texture to it. Now, granted, I'm not talking about like texture paste, grit paste, or any of those Ranger things. I'm talking about just white, plain old white modeling paste, texture paste. I really don't use it for anything. Um, so this is nice for foiling. This is really the only one I put my money into anymore. Okay. Uh, Oh, yeah, I have like a, I forget what they call this, what kind of pin. It's a um, corsage pin. I think that's what this is. So it's stainless steel, and it's super long. Right, exactly, Dawn. There's so many other alternatives out there, and you don't need to buy um, deco foil gel because this works in place of that. So I'm just, just an alternative for you instead of the old white stuff here. Speaking of, you may not see this stuff around anymore. These are Heidi Swap Texture Paste. Now I will say I bought these on sale. Again, one of those sale things. And I thought, oh, you know what? I didn't like them because you can't scrape this up and put it back in here, okay? So to me, it's wasteful, right? So I bought these little jars and I squirted all of them into the little jars here. I even put what color they were on there. Well, guess what happened? They all dried out, and I had to pick them out and throw them in the trash. So don't buy them. Even if they're on sale, it's not worth it. Okay, moving on. Um, glue pads, embossing pads. Okay, there are several companies that sell embossing pads and glue pads. Uh, Brutus Monroe no longer sells a glue pad. It's designed to have glue on it. This one's dried out, I think. Um, and then help you, like, if you, wanted, if you wanted to stamp with this and do glitter on it, um, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, it says a clear heat-activated adhesive solution for applying fine pigments, glitter, gold leaf metallic, chalk powders, and stamped it. It doesn't work, okay? So embossing powders, embossing powders. No, well, wait, wait till I get to number one. Um, em embossing, um, I just say just use the Versamark. This is the only embossing pad you need. Um, but I don't think that glue pads or other embossing pads are really worth it. Now, if you find one that you really like, then use it. But um, there's really no point in it because it doesn't work out as well as we would like it to work. Gloria, if you want to send me one, yes. I do have two bottles. I have one with the lid on it, so I go back and forth between the two. Um, okay, here we go. Getting down to the wire. Oh, here's one I pulled out. How many of you guys have this guy? The We Are Memory Keepers Project Life. I forget what it's called, but it's a heat tool. <coughs> Excuse me. And it had the little... Here it is. Um, it has these little accessories. You can change the tip so that you can make your own plastic baggies. For whatever reason... My plastic baggies don't say shut. And I've used them on these Avery L bags. 
and let's say you put a stamp in there and the stamp is or you want to make a shaker a shaker thing or whatever yeah the fuse tool and you're supposed to like make a shaker bag and then you just heats up and go and it's supposed to melt it well mine always comes apart even using their stuff and so i wish i had never bought this thing now i recently just um, revived it trying to use it in place of the foil quill you can use this which is why i had this other tip on it you can use this like the foil quill so if you are into doing hand lettering on your foil quill not through your electronic machine you you can hot foil with this and i've shown that where you can push down on the foil the problem is this tip is really really thin and this whole thing gets hot so it's really really dangerous so um yeah did not live up to my expectations of watching all of the crafty things they did with it on hsn when i bought it yeah yeah just a big fat disappointment i don't have a an alternative to that just i don't like the foil quill <laughs> um yeah basically it's a soldering tool yes uh, Gloria uses it for shaker cards. Yeah, I just don't, I don't do shaker cards like that. Well, there you go, Stacy. You can try that. Um, transfer tape. All right, for those of you who talked about Baby Joy, do not buy this. And if you bought it, Noelle, and if you bought it, Ryan, and who else bought Baby Joy the other day? Okay, send this, send this, return this. Okay, the Cricut transfer tape blows. All right, so you're going to ask me for an alternative. What I've been using on all of your FSC decals. Okay. This works great, and I have been using this for all of your decals. I put one on my car, two on my car, put one on my mailbox, put one on my boat. It, it takes the vinyl and it releases it perfectly, and you get 12 inches. This is um, the 25 feet roll. I don't know if this is the bigger one or the smaller one, but they I think they have a smaller, bigger roll. But I like it because it has the grid lines on the front it has grid lines on the back it's very easy to um transfer so here you can see these are the holographic vinyl and then i would cut it and then this would peel off and then you're going to stick this on your baby joy or stick it on your stamp platform and then you just rub over it and it will transfer over it and this piece i've used this piece like four or five times and it is still sticky still sticky so don't buy the Cricut brand transfer tape you don't get a lot it's very difficult it does not work well at all um and just just get the Arteza it's really inexpensive and it works out great and I tried the Silhouette brand too and I've tried contact paper a contact paper is just not sticky enough so this works really good yeah take it out of your cart Noel and like I said everything that I'm showing you guys if you can't find it, let me know. I probably have links somewhere for you. Okay, we're getting down to some weird stuff here now. All right. I'm sorry. This didn't work. <laughs> All right. I really wish that this was... I have the Arteza link, Noel. I really wish that this worked as well as the foil works, but these neon enamels are very difficult to come off the transfer sheet. They are translucent, so they won't they don't work well on dark cardstock. You have to be using the transfer gel blanco or using it on white paper for it to show through. So again, uh, the enamels just not my cup of tea. Um, well, if you, here's the problem with that. If you stick this on a piece of paper, 
your vinyl is going to stick, but then your transfer tape could stick to it depending on the paper. So this is mostly used if you're going to be doing vinyl because most people do vinyl for like home decor. A lot of people do vinyl when they're making those, what are those in things now? The tumblers, the tumbler glasses, you know, if you want to put that on there. You know, you could do that and then put resin over it. But if you're going to stick it on paper, just use a sticker. Don't use, don't use vinyl. Use sticker paper. All right. Yes, this one's a weird one. How many of you guys have one of these? So for demonstration purposes, I do have a little bit of water in this container. I'm going to put a little bit of, look, re-inker in here just so you can see the water color otherwise it's clear okay so what this is is a paintbrush rinsing tool and so what this is supposed to do is you have your bottom tub here yes a crafting bidet <laughs> you're supposed to put this on top and then your paint brushes can dry off in here all right, and then what this does, you guys have self-watering dog bowls, cat bowls, whatever. So what this is supposed to do is when you are painting, watercoloring, whatever, it's supposed to give you fresh water. It will stop here eventually, I hope. Yeah, so it stops filling up. So I have plenty of water in the, in the storage container, and then this gives me fresh water so I can watercolor with it. And then there's actually little groove lines in the bottom there so I can clean my brush out um, and then, you know, move on with painting. And then I can set my paint brushes on over here to dry. And then this is your little toilet plunger and you push this down and it takes all the dirty water and it gives you fresh water, okay? So great idea. Why is it on my list? It is on my list because the toilet is broken. All right. So what happens is, <laughs> you guys. Um, oh, hello, not sister. Stop it. Um, so what happens is as I let this sit, as I'm working, I'm noticing that it just keeps draining the water out. So it's continuously filling and draining. It has a slow leak. Um, I really thought like maybe there was something in the mechanism. I've turned it over. I've tried to adjust it. No, it's just in the nature of the beast. Everything ends up sinking to the bottom and it's really big and cumbersome and it's just too much of a pain in the ass for the water to be leak leaking all over the place. So my solution is to use water brushes. I find myself reaching more and more for the water brushes. So then you don't have to worry about it or just, just using a regular cup of water. And you guys have asked me what this is. This is an old candy. <laughs> it's an old candy uh, dispenser. Um, the kids schools or something was selling like M&Ms were in here. So there was a little baggie in here with M&Ms and the container that you could, and I just kept it and used it. This is my little water dish. So I have a little water. I think I have a little detergent in there, soap or something in there, but that's all I use or my water brushes. And then I take it up and it gets dirty and I rinse it out. So, um, yeah, the, the painting crafting bidet leaks and it's not, not worth it. Not worth it. Flush it down the toilet. <laughs> I always speak in analogies because when I'm talking to my kids, I don't know how much they actually understand. So doing analogies is easier for me. All right. I think I'm down to my last two things. I think you guys are going to be surprised by one, but not surprised by the other. So here we go. Oh, I got one more. Sorry. Not this one. This is the Stampin' Up! Sponge. So this was designed, and as you can see, when it first came out, I used it all the time. What this is designed to do is to clean and, and scrub your stamps. Um, but when everybody came out with the chamois, you guys know the stamp chamois. Some of you probably, probably have that. I did not buy the stamp chamois because exactly what I thought would happen happened, which is the stamp chamois gets mildewy and moldy and it stinks. So Nancy never jumped on the stamp chamois train. 
but I do have a stamp and scrub and I do use my stamp and scrub. So this helps when you're doing a lot of stamping. You can see this is worn down. I've got a hole in the middle there. Um, it, it gets, um, it's a little spongy and it cleans your, your stamp. So if you're doing a lot of dirty stamping or a lot of stamping, it makes it easier to clean them. This thing, I really tried to give it a go, but it dries out so quickly. What you're supposed to do is spray it and then clean your sponge or clean your stamps on the sponge. It dries out so quickly that it's just, it's hard. So I never use that anymore. I don't recommend buying it. <laughs> just use microfiber towels. I tell you guys all this time, microfiber towels are very easy. They don't smell. They don't stain. They, I mean, they don't like stain your fingers. They don't transfer the ink over. You just spray a little water and cleaning solution. And then I throw these in the wash once in a while. And even though they're stained, they're clean. They clean my stamps good. I don't need to worry about wasting BB wipes. Um, you can get them in all kinds of different colors. If the staining bothers you, you can throw it away and get some new ones. But um, yeah, you can see I have quite a few and these are nice. They don't leave any residue on your, on your um, like strings or flyaways on your stamps. They clean the stamps pretty well. And really, you just need a little bit of, of soap and water. A stamp cleaner, I do recommend like a stamp soap. So either like um, Brutus Monroe Squeaky Clean, uh, Close to My Heart Cleaner, Stampin' Up. Everybody sells cleaner. Hero Arts, I used that for a long time. Hero Arts Ultra Clean. Whatever you can use. I just squirt a little bit of that and wipe it off. A chamois. Okay, good question, Susie. What is the difference between a chamois and a microfiber cloth? All right. I'm going to tell you. Chamois were originally made out of leather. And what they were designed to do is when something was damp, especially when it comes to car detailing, chamois are designed to absorb that water okay so their job is to absorb the water make your car nice and shiny without having water spots okay microfiber cloth is the new man-made version of that okay so the chamois originally were made out of leather they now have kind of made them in the synthetic but they are designed to grab water and hold on to that water okay Microfiber cloths are designed to be static free and um, they really don't hold on to the water. I mean, yeah, it, it cleans up moisture, but it's designed to clean static free without leaving any kind of hairs behind. Now, a lot of people do not like, there is a funky feel with these because it's a synthetic material, but they do clean very well. I do think the chamois feel weirder. Um, but these are very nice, soft, and designed to really get in and clean the grit without a whole bunch of effort. If your microfiber leaves lint, wash it. If you bought an a inexpensive microfiber, they might wash, put it in the washer and dry it. But your microfiber should not leave lint. If it's true microfiber. And most microfiber is going to have some kind of um, texture to it. Super smooth microfiber, like they make microfiber sheets. You can get like super smooth. But these cleaning cloths will have some kind of a texture to them, but they should not le use lint. Don't use dryer sheets with them, Jody says. I did not know that, Jody. Yeah, they don't streak. I leave I leave them in my car. Listen, these things are in my stamping room. They're in my car when I'm cleaning my car. They clean the dash. They clean the windows. They're in my tackle box for when I'm fishing. And clean the guts off my fingers from worms. How to make your own cleaner. Um, yeah, I don't know. Wash them with your yoga pants, Ryan says. Stacy wants to know, Ryan, do you have yoga pants? Will you wear them in your next video? <laughs> he says, Ryan says I do, but that is for another video. Okay, then. <laughs> it inhibits them from absorbing as well if you use dryer sheets. That makes sense because dryer sheets are designed to create um, stain resistance, right? Yeah, no fabric softener, no dryer sheets. Okay. All right, moving on. Robin Hood. <laughs> um, I have two last things. 
Some of you aren't even going to know what this one is. Here we go. Only true Nancy Stamps old school fans are going to know what this is. Two hundred and four people watching. Wow, a light box, a scanner. Ding, 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 ding. D. Actually, it's my gel nail salon. Oh, I got to turn it on. <laughs> it is a stamp maker it's actually a uv light and it is what nail salons use okay kiki says how many thumbs up 37 thumbs up so this is a stamp maker so what you do is you print out your design that you want to become a stamp so if i were to stamp if i would print this out and there's a special film you're supposed to use to print it out on and then once you print it out, you put it in uh, in this machine in a little sandwich with this gel. And I'm not, I don't want to get that stuff out right now because it's very sensitive to light. And then what the gel does is the gel hardens in here just like gel nails harden. And it makes a stamp. And I actually just threw the stamps away last week. So the problem is you you can you you can lose a lot of detail in your stamps and they're so super thin because of the gel the little sandwich that goes in the gel they don't stick to blocks very well and you get a lot of oh my gosh you scared me where'd you come from <laughs> um you get a lot of inconsistently made stamps so um i had fun for the two times that i used it <laughs> It just sits in the drawer. I never use it, but I joke and say I'm going to use it to, to do my nails because that is what you could use it for. Uh, in case you guys didn't notice, the kids are still playing their Let's Scare Mommy game, and Leah just got home from the pool. Yeah, it's just too inconsistent. Um, you're better off having, what's the stamp guy's name, Magnuson? You're better off having Magnuson make you a personalized stamp than making your own stamp. Can you say hi, Leah? All right. And we are down to the number one thing I wish I hadn't bought. And I'm pretty sure all of you can guess what it is. Um, can you put these in the giveaway box on the floor Why over there? Why you never bought these? Because they're big and heavy. Put them over there in the giveaway box on the floor. Oh, on the floor. On the floor behind you. The big white box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, throw this in there too. I don't want that either. <laughs> Somebody can have it. Y'all are getting all my junk. <laughs> I'm still waiting for, for, for guesses here. I'm also putting my things away while you guys are guessing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, Jody, yes, the glimmer, but I bought that for demonstration purposes, so I can't really say that. Baby Joy, nope, I love my baby Joy. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, ooh, it actually just fell into the trash. How appropriate. <laughs> Boom. Number one. Number one. Come on, like you guys didn't know that was going to be number one. 
the glimmer I bought for you guys to compare against the Gemini foil press. So yes, although I regret buying it, I think it has educational purposes for those of you who do not have a Gemini machine or Gemini Junior, and I just have to learn how to use it. So I don't really hate the glimmer. Um, I like just like the Gemini foil press over the glimmer, but I don't hate the glimmer. So I must get one question every single week on my YouTube channel for people that have just started watching me or just subscribed to me or for whatever reason got turned on to my channel and they get into the foiling part of it and I get a question every week. Once a week I get a question that says... What do you recommend for foiling with stamps? <laughs> um, so, not this. <laughs> there, there is not, there is not a product out there that works for that yet, you guys. And you know, um, Brutus Monroe came out with this foil reactive embossing powder and all it is really is super fine clear embossing powder but he even states when he put this out and these both pretty much came out at this, this came out shortly after this that you're not going to get a solid you know i'm gonna say a foiling snobs club uh effort here you're going to get a distressed look now again if you're in a distressed and grunge that's fine. But if you're in a distressed and grunge, I don't see you putting a lot of foil on those projects. You know, when we think of foil, we think a little more refined, a little more elegant. Wedding cards, um, holiday cards. You save your foil for really good stuff. Like, you don't put foil on everyday cards. And if you're into um, grunge or distress, you, you're doing the opposite. You're, you're, you're adding you know, browns and distress. You're not adding foil to your designs, right, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> so when this product came out, for those of you that have been watching me for a little while, this product came out last year, um, actually came out this year at Creativation, sorry, the beginning of the year. And I really tried hard, you guys. I mean, go back and look. There's a foiling playlist. And I did five videos, I think, with this. And it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Then Tim Holtz came out and tried to help Heidi a little bit ago um, by saying, add this dropper. I think that's a great idea. And what he did was he put it directly onto, so those of you that do have it, don't use the pads. The stamp pads are garbage. Okay, so it comes with the plastic container. It comes with the stamp pads. They're garbage. Do not use them. Um, first of all, they're upside down. So this is supposed to be where that little foam pad sticks. That's the top. That's the lid. It's curved. This is the flat part. So you can actually see the toner ink sticks in there. You can see the bits and pieces of the stamp pad disintegrating and sticking in there. And it's upside down. So that should be the bottom. That's actually the lid. So it's manufactured incorrectly. It's manufactured upside down. Um, The stamp pad itself is a foam pad, but it literally disintegrates. Once you put this toner ink in there, it takes a few hours um, or a little while for the toner ink, not a few hours, but it takes a little while for the toner ink to um, soak into there, into the pad. And then look at that. There is no way of keeping this pad in there. It falls out so if you think you're going to your stamp pad or your ink your stamp with this yep good luck with that okay hence why it sticks to the lid which should actually be the bottom so it's manufactured incorrectly the stamp pad is a cheap disposable stamp pad and then the problem itself is the ink the ink is too sticky, too messy, dries too quickly, and has a very short shelf life. As soon as you put it into the stamp pad, it starts to harden. And as it starts to harden, you cannot use it anymore. So it needs to be 
it's a great idea in theory, absolutely, but it needs to be taken back to the chemist and reworked. So Tim Holtz was the only one who got close to making it work. And what he did was he took a dropper, which was a great idea, and he smeared some of it out on the mat. I'm not gonna do it because I just put this nice clean mat on. And then he took a brayer and he brayered it and then he brayered it on the stamp and he was the only one to get it to even slightly work okay but again you're going to have the tim holtz look which is grungy which is still very pretty but the majority of us that are doing foiling think if i'm going to stamp an image i want that image to foil exactly the way it's stamped so the only way you can get that to work Yeah, and when these came, I think this is $10 a bottle, and when this kit came out, it was $25. It was $25, and I bought two of them. Two, I spent $50 doing those videos. And you need to use a specialty coated paper, because if you use regular paper, it is going to rip the paper. So you want to use like the glossy paper or the coated papers we showed, because this will rip your paper. It is super sticky. So in my opinion... It's just going to give you headaches and gray hair. It really is. Um, if you want to have your foiling images, and this, this is the only way you're going to get it work, and I don't have the greatest example here, but I'm going to give you an example. Well, yeah. Um, oh, no, I have iced tea here. Drink that. Drink that. Nope. So I know these are the these are the um, printables from Kitchen Sink Stamps, but I'm going to give you the theory of the idea here, okay? So the only way this is going to work is if you have a scanner and a laser printer. So what you would do is let's pretend, we're going to pretend here that this was a stamp. And I stamped this out with black ink using my Versamark Versa, VersaFine Claire ink. So you want to use the blackest, blackest, blackest ink you can get, okay? Now I'm going to go over to my computer. Hi, Simon. I'm going to go over to my... Simon, you came in at the perfect time, actually. You're, um, I'm going to go over to my computer. I'm going to scan this into my computer. Once I scan it into my computer, I want to print it out on laser print... Laser printer, right? You have to print a laser printer. After you print it out with your laser printer then you can foil it, okay? Then you can foil it. That is the only way that you're going to get perfectly foiled stamped images. But the, the products that are out there right now, there's nothing that's going to give you perfect. It's There's a lot of work that needs to be done with the type of paper you use, the type of stamps that you use, and the... <laughs> Simon, no. Um, the type of paper you use, the type of stamps that you use, and, and do it. So um, a lot of people have tried to make this work, but unfortunately, you have to use a special coated paper. When Simon did his video, he revealed that you need, need to use red rubber stamps. And when Tim Holtz did his video, he revealed that you needed to use a brayer. So all three of us have tried this, and all three of us found secrets to making it work better but I still don't think it's perfected. So unfortunately, that is the number one thing that I wish I didn't spend my money on. And it is also the only thing on my list that I cannot give you an alternative to. Everything else, I think you can find an alternative to. That's correct, Elizabeth. If you're going to do that, it can only be personal use. Simon, I am super excited because I just ordered all of your stamp pads from Brutus Monroe. And so they should be here any day now. Simon, we won't put you on the spot and ask you if there's anything you wish you hadn't purchased. <laughs> we know you got affiliations you need to keep the good good with. It's fine. We got it. 
<laughs> um, also want to let you guys know, Not Too Shabby Shop did run out of the gnome stamps. She is going to uh, order a couple more for you. Um, but they are from My Favorite Things, so I'll also link for you guys the My Favorite Things link if you really wanted to get them. She does have the balloon set in stamps or in stock, and she does have two sets of the Catherine Pooler inks. The third set of the Catherine Pooler inks did sell out, um, but she's going to be getting more of those in stock as well. Noelle has $30 credit with Brutus Monroe. Where do I start, Noelle? Okay, first of all, if you don't have... If you don't have a must, must, must have is, yes, right here. This ink is very, very good for, for Copic coloring. So I would say yes, definitely this. Oh, yeah, wait till you see them, Simon. Ryan's cards are gorgeous. Um, so you want to get this and the refill. And you want to get the clear... And the white embossing powders. The clear and the white embossing powders are very good embossing powders. These two embossing powders I would recommend all day long. Brutus Monroe Icicle is the clear and an alabaster white. So definitely those two. And then look around and see what you think. Tracy would be the one to ask because Tracy has more Brutus Monroe than anybody. Yeah, Ryan's only on our Facebook group and Instagram right now. We are trying to get him to start a YouTube channel. How long is my corsage pin? Hold on. It is, looks like two and a quarter. Oops, out of frame, two and a quarter. Uh, Ryan, I just showed you what to buy for an embossing pad. Oh, he wasn't here. Ryan wasn't here for the first part of my video. Here you go, Ryan. That's your do-all, be-all embossing. Yeah, Simon, we're going to get him to start a channel. Simon's ears must have been ringing, Ryan, because we were talking about him. Simon, we were just talking about how much we love how you are really engaging for younger people to try to get, um, you know, young people to to get engaged with crafting and card making and stamping and we love your energy we love your positivity um yeah and you bring something fresh and new to the table so yes we were talking about you simon yes stays on does smell we did say that before Oh, happy birthday, Erica. You need one of these? You need one of these? I think Simon needs one of these. Simon's an honorary member. So if your birthday is in July or August and you didn't get a decal, Email me at nancystamps15 at gmail.com and I will send you an FSC decal. Ryan's already asked for a new one because he needs it for his Tim Holtz stamping platform. What about smart vinyl? Well, Laura, you got to wait till February. Smart vinyl, I have purchased. Um, you really can buy regular vinyl and cut it down and it'll still work though. So, so smart vinyl's fine for Baby Joy in the beginning because we all want to get Baby Joy and start crafting with it right away. 
Um, but to be honest, you can buy any size regular vinyl and just cut it down and put it through the machine. Make sure you guys get the long mat. Ryan, did you get the long mat? Make sure you guys get the long mat. The card mat, I'm like, meh, iffy about the card mat. But yeah, you want to get like the long mat and the short mat. And they do, you, they do lose their stick, so you might want to put a little zig... Um, I put some zig on mine or some pixie spray works great too. Here's, here's the regular size mat and then here's the longer mat. So this, I think Ryan, this will come in handy for you so you can cut like more of your cake toppers that you're making. But you can you don't have to use smart vinyl. You can usually you can literally cut down regular vinyl if you have Arteza vinyl or Silhouette or Oracle 650, whatever vinyl you you can cut it down as long as it fits on this grid and stick it on here. Um, the smart vinyl, the rolls are not that big, you guys, just so you know. Let me show it to you. And I know they sell longer rolls. And, you know, again, their whole appeal is it's a little bitty machine. But. It's five and a half inches wide by 48 inches long. So what is that? Four feet. So I've used some of this, but it doesn't take doesn't take much to go through it. And I like the permanent vinyl. I don't like the temporary vinyl. But like I said, there are other vinyl companies you can buy vinyl from. And you can cut it down to fit on here. And you just stick it stick it on there. So I bought a couple rolls to start it. But I'm just going to use my Arteza vinyl. I like the Arteza. You guys are turning this into a baby joy conversation here. Yeah, it's four feet. Can you buy smart vinyl in different lengths? You can, yes. Oh, 651 is now called 143. Yeah, Margaret, just send me an email and remind me. Oh, Tracy just got home. Six fifty one is permanent vinyl. So if you're putting it on your car, which is what most of us are doing, you want permanent vinyl. If you're just doing temporary wall stickings and you're gonna take, like, you want to make a holiday, a Halloween pumpkin, and you want to put it on your your wall, and you want to take it down when Halloween's over, then then you would use temporary vinyl. Hi, Selma. That's right. The purpose of the smart vinyl is so you don't have to use the mat. However, from a budget standpoint, it's not very budget friendly. <laughs> That's why I said if you're going to use your own vinyl, have the long mat so you can cut it down. And then you don't have to spend twice as much on less vinyl. Is the scan and cut worth it? Do you want my honest opinion on that? Yes, they have matte permanent vinyl, correct. This one's matte. This is white matte, I think. Maybe not. They also have, like, you can write on it vinyl, writable vinyl or something like that. Okay, so you guys can't be mad at me when I'm about to say what I'm going to say. I started out with the little bitty silhouette. Was it called the, not the cameo, what's portrait? The silhouette portrait. The silhouette portrait. And then I graduated myself to the silhouette cameo. And this is the stuff I did on my silhouette cameo, was I cut out vinyl and I made decals for my friends. I made Christmas ornaments. Um, yeah, I made some cards. I did, um, oh, painting, uh, vinyl p for painting and shirts for the kids, things like that. And I thought 
nothing was better than the silhouette cameo because I could make my own designs and um, now I have to watch what I say because here comes Melanie. Um, <laughs> make my own designs. And at that time, the only, the Cricut machines, you had to buy the Cricut cartridges. And the Scan and Cut, when it came out, honestly, I was like, that's a whole heck of a lot of money for a machine that can scan and cut my stamps out. It appealed to me, but I thought, oh, that's all the Scan and Cut's going to do is it's going to, it's going to scan my stamps and it's going to cut you out, right? Cut it out. Um, so when Melanie offered to send me her extra scan and cut, I was like, okay, sure, I'll take it because I'm never going to spend $350 on a machine when I have the Silhouette machine and my Silhouette, and I have the Silhouette Cameo too. I don't even have the newest Silhouette Cameo, but I was like, that's the be-all glorified machine, and now I'll be able to try this scan and cut and see if it's really worth using. So when the scan and cut came, my only idea of using the scan and cut was just to scan stamped images and cut them out. Um, I think I could totally live on the scan and cut alone without my silhouette at this point, honestly. Um, the scan and cut is wireless, which makes it a whole heck of a lot easier. It's actually over on the other side of my room. I don't have to have it next to my computer. Yes, it scans the stamped images and cuts them out. It does a very good job. I think that the settings are a lot easier to use on the... Um, yeah, I got a new sticky mat on the scan and cut than they are on my silhouette. It cuts out my SVGs. It cuts out my vinyl. It cuts out everything I was doing on my silhouette machine on the scan and cut. So I, I think the scan and cut has kind of bumped. I have not used my silhouette. The last time I went to use my silhouette was to cut these decals out and it really ticked me off that it didn't do such a good job like the scan and cut did. I haven't used it. I have not used it. So, yes, Melanie gave me the best gift this year by sending me that scan and cut. And, yes, I'm a believer now, and I am totally going to endorse the scan and cut. And if she hadn't sent me that machine, I would never be able to endorse it. $350, whatever that it is totally worth it. I love that machine. Um, you know, I bought Baby Joy because it's small, it's cute, I wanted to show it off to you guys, but if you only have the budget for one machine, save up, get the Scan and Cut. Don't buy the Baby Joy, don't buy the Silhouette machine, get the Scan and Cut. It really has made my life so much easier. And I don't have to buy dies anymore. That's the cool part, is you guys just saw, I just showed you the haul video of stamps I bought and I didn't buy any dies because I can get I can get the dies I don't need them anymore and now when I use my kitchen sink stamps all I want to do is cut my SVGs out because they're free and I can get them and use them with my so yeah I, I am a scan and cut believer now yes she's converted me And I don't need the, I don't know what the difference is with the auto blade. I do turn my blade, but I had to do that on my silhouette anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it doesn't, I'll cut you Disney decals to stick it on there, Laura. You don't need a Disney one. No, well, it opens a whole bunch of doors, but you just got Baby Joy, so you, you can find you're going to be able to do most of what you need to do with Baby Joy. And I think Baby Joy is just cute and is the right size. Yes. And I do keep my eyes open when I see sales. And, and just so you guys know, behind the scenes, you guys think we don't talk until, like, Stacy, Chow, Tracy, and I have an open chat. We are constantly talking to each other. 18 out of 24 hours a day. I mean, Stacy was so kind to send me a text at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell me that opal polishes were on sale at Joann's. <laughs> but um, we keep our eyes open. So when we see things go on sale, like uh, the Misty sale, 
we we all got the misty for thirty dollars. That's the only reason we all jumped on these black misties because we got them for thirty dollars. We weren't gonna spend sixty dollars on that. Thirty dollars, right? When we see the mink go on sale for forty dollars, when we see the scan and cut, we let you guys know right away. We're like, sale, sale. And it's not because we're trying to enable you, because we know some of you guys have been looking and holding on to your pennies, and we just want you to know. Now, that whole Creative Vision stamps thing, you guys, I think she's done lost her mind. Laura has gone crazy. Crazy. She's posting her foil on there for $10. She is agreeing to ship it to anywhere. What? 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 And... She just put mystery boxes up there? What? I'm like, this woman has lost her mind. Yeah, if you haven't been on the FSC, she's got what's left over for her um, remaining inventory that she was basically hoarding for herself. Um, but she realizes there's, you know, just more there. So she's put together, yeah, there's no such thing as free shipping. You got to go on the Foiling Snobs Club page. There's a there's a post at the very top of the page. She only has a few rolls of foil left. You guys got it. It's $10, I think, for the roll of foil plus whatever your shipping is. And you can only get like one or two rolls of each color. And now half of it's sold out already. There was only nine colors of foil. And that had so, you just, there's some foilables on there and some stuff on there. Who had the Misty for $30? Uh, Joann's did many moons ago. I think it was around Thanksgiving. Yeah, that was a long time ago, you guys. No, it wasn't over Thanksgiving. That was over quarantine. Because remember, none of us could go into Joann's to get it. Ryan. <laughs> it is not the new Misty. It is the old Misty. The only difference is they went into collaboration with Hero Arts. So instead of the stickers being pink, Leah, can I see your Misty? The stickers are black. That is the only difference. But Joann's, during the pandemic, had them for $30. And normally this is what? $50, $60? Bucks? So here, here is an original Misty, Mini Misty. And it's got pink stickers on it. And here is the Hero Arts collab. And it's exactly the same. It's got the stupid plastic hinges. It's got black stickers on there and then it just says hero arts in the corner that's it but the the brand new it's completely different from the brand the brand new one that's that's not what this is this is just it's black stickers instead of pink stickers so leah got my pink one and i took the black one Oh, if you guys have never seen, go to Nancy's unboxing videos. You will see what comes in those mystery boxes. You get a lot of stuff. Yep, foilables, yep. Yeah, I don't think the mini Misty has enhancements. I have an original Misty, too. This one's been loved, dropped, cracked. Kind of like Ryan's. <laughs> Ryan's is broken. <laughs> It has tape holding it together, you guys. Like, there's clear plastic tape on the outside of this holding this together. But I very rarely use this one anymore. It's just too big. She sells replacement stickers. If you don't like your colors, you can buy these replacement stickers. They're on the, on the website. Yes, yeah, Simon just did a video. Yep, he, had, he compared the new one and the old one. He did a very good comparison video. Oh, Jacqueline's trying to take us down a rabbit hole. Mm. 
the mystery box is foilables, yes. So, Jacqueline just asked the question, what about the Tim Holtz tool? So, the Tim Holtz tool you cannot purchase in the United States. The only way you can get that is to order it off of Amazon and it will be shipped to you from somewhere overseas. So you cannot buy it unless you buy it off of Amazon. And Ryan just bought one and he just got it. And I think he paid $40 including shipping. Is that correct, Ryan? All right, so I'm going to do a quick rundown here. Ryan is being politically correct. <laughs> well, Ryan, Ryan and I talked about this today because we all have different styles. Like, clearly, Ryan's style is different from my style, is different from Tracy's style, is different from Tim Holtz's style, is different from Simon's style. We all have different styles, right? So... There are different tools in the market for our styles. There are different types of ink pads. We talked about earlier that there are different types of ink blenders, different different things, different folks, different strokes, right? So I'm, tr I'm trying to be politically correct as well, all right? But I do kind of agree with Ryan, okay? So when history lesson here, Original Misty came out. Most incredible stamping tool ever. Lived up to that name. Okay. But this was, I think it was $60, you guys, when it came out. And, of course, you know, I bought one. I mean, I remember being so excited. I got it around my birthday and being like, this is the best birthday gift ever. I think it was $60. And I think this one's $50, the small one. But, anyway. Okay. However, I started to notice right away that, and I've said this, I mean, you can see mine started to crack. It has surface cracks in it. So I put tape on it to try to protect it. When the mini one came out, this one came out, the first one I bought, I bought this one right away and pulled full, full price. So I think this was one fifty was $50. So I think it was $60 for this one, $50 for this one, okay? Um, the one that came to me was actually broken. The plastic hinges were broken and, um, she had me send it back to her. She did send me a new one, but I was kind of disappointed considering I had a $60 one and a $50 one. And you can see the little surface cracks in there. It doesn't affect the stamping, but now I had one sent to me that was broken. So I knew I kind of had to be gentle with it and be careful with it. Right? So when Tim Holtz came out with his, Tim Holtz's was a couple of things that made me want it. It's It was $40. Um, it's open here. So if you do scrapbooking, and I do still do scrapbooking, you can put a large 12 by 12 sheet of paper in here. I like the convenience that you can flip this lid. You can do rubber stamps on one side. You just lift the lid, you flip it over, and you put it back in there. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to take any foam pieces out or anything. You just lift, take it out, flip it over, and put it back in. So, of course, I bought one. It was $40. It handled a bigger sheet of paper. I like the fact that you could just flip it over and use it for clear stamps or rubber stamps. However... Um, and, tr and Stacy has the same issue. It doesn't always stamp, um, a hundred percent, especially if you're doing a bigger stamp. When you get the, when you get the bigger stamp, um, it, you have to, you know, press down a few times, but this is a much sturdier, heavier duty acrylic. So, and this is a metal hinge in here. So you have a metal hinge, you have heavier. I don't have any problem what Tim calls CPR stamping and pressing down on this on my heavier stamps. Now, uh, Stacy has recommended to get a piece of fun foam when you have those difficult stamps and put this piece of fun foam underneath and then stamp. And that has really helped me out once Stacy told me that. 
but I basically use them for different purposes. I keep this one for red rubber stamping because it's a larger surface area. It's easier for me to press down on this and not be afraid I'm going to crack it or break it. So from a price point standpoint, I also like that there is a little like groove here. Now the brand new Misty, they've changed that, but I do like this groove. It makes it easier to open it, close it. I like, like I said, that it's open. Plus this is a lot easier to clean because it's just plastic. There's no um, paper or anything like that. Of course, I still use the grid paper under all of them. The one I use the most is the small card maker one, which is this one. All the time for my regular small stamping, my layered stamping, this is the one I reach for all the time. But when I'm doing big rubber background stamps, I like this one. So it's all in what's, again, in your in your budget, in what you lean towards. Regardless of the political avenue that this went down, they're both great products. Unfortunately, this one is not allowed to be sold in the United States. The only way you can get this one is if you purchase it from a company that is overseas and they ship it to you. So you are going to pay more. Um, and they just redid the large Misty. And like I said, Simon did a great comparison video on it. I already have, as you can see, one, two, three, four stamp platforms. So I don't need to buy another one. But the new one has a nice lip to pull it up now. There's a storage compartment for the magnet. And the hinges are now the nicer uh, hinges. So you can go check out Simon's video. He did a really excellent comparison between the old one and the new one. But it, again, just depends on how you think you're going to use it. So I do like both of them. I use them for two different purposes. You certainly don't need two of them. Um, so it's based on your budget and how you think you're going to use it. That's what I say about it. Si or, um, Ryan, it's like all of our conversations just like deja vu today. Because Ryan and I had this same conversation earlier today. To Tracy Nancy. <laughs> and I don't have the Stamparatus because even though I am a hobby demonstrator for Stampin' Up, I have four stamp positioners, you guys. How many more do you want me to buy? <laughs> Melanie bought three before they were outlawed. All right, so we went off on a tangent there. The whole purpose of this video were the top things that I wish I hadn't bought or no longer buy. Um, if there's anything you guys can think of, certainly comment down below on uh, any of that. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for your honest opinions on everything. And like I said, your opinion doesn't have to match my opinion. I just try to be honest with you based on how I use certain products. It's okay if you feel differently about things. Does it make anybody right or wrong? It's just different strokes for different folks. Simon, she loves that set. Hey, Simon's on here, Leah. Simon, she got so excited. She went to bed that night and she's like all giggling to herself. And I'm like, why are you giggling? She's like, I can't believe Simon watched me. Simon was on the live and he watched me. He watched me make that card with his stamps. Like she was so excited, Simon. She's going to need a card, Simon. You're going to have to send her a card so she can hang it up. We'll hang up next to my Jennifer McGuire card in the Wall of Fame. I did not fix my guillotine. <laughs> I'm still using it broken. I was not bashing. You guys are so mean. <laughs> All right, you guys. If no one has any more questions, I'm going to hang out with my daughter who ran away from me all day and went swimming. Propaganda, right? <laughs> I know, Simon. Any day now. Any day now. <laughs> I think Ryan and I were talking about doing a uh, duo 
Ryan on the inks. I think Ryan's demonstration is going to be way better than my demonstration. Jacqueline, we're going to talk about that this week. Zyron Candace is asking about. All right, Candace. How do I feel about the Zyron? Hey, Leah, can you go take this up and rinse it? Okay. So be remember that I started this as a scrapbooker and um, I, I, I told a very funny story about this not too long ago, but we're not going to go into that. But this was my very first Zyron machine. I don't think they make this anymore, but what you can do is you, you can fit in here a full size of eight and a half by 11 paper and oh, let me raise this up so you can see a little better. Um, and it'll come out the other side as a sticker, okay? I'm not going to demonstrate that right now. But this is like a full size, and then there's a little trimmer down here where you can slice it, and then you can make either stickers, you can make adhesive, you can make um, um, magnets out of it. So it's a really great little machine. These cartridges come out, you change change what you want. I love this machine, but they I think they discontinued it because I have somewhere in the back a hoarding of glue or adhesive. So great for photos and things like that. Um, this is the one I moved to for the back of my photos. It's just adhesive. And again, all you do is pull down on it and then it's basically just putting adhesive dots on the back of your stuff and they will stick down. I don't really use this as much anymore unless I'm mass producing cards or pictures or something. It does that. And then um, this is the little Xyron little sticker creator it's called and it's exactly that. If I have small little die cuts you can drop the little die cuts in there and then pull them out. But somebody already said on here you do get what we call Xyron boogers. <laughs> Because that's what it's like when you put something small in there. So, let me just show you here. You just have to be careful of that. Anything that has a little open area. Just rub the adhesive down. And the adhesive will only stick to the back. And now we have a little tree. But you can see in the finer areas of the little tree there... There's excess adhesive, so you need to use like a little pick tool to pick those off or you will have excess adhesive, so you will have Xyron boogers. So that's the only downside, but it does come in handy if you forget to put adhesive on something before you die cut it. So there's my opinion on Xyron. I used to use it a lot. I definitely don't regret using it. Like I said, I think they've discontinued some of their product or have moved to improving their product or changed the sizes of it. So I have the very, very old stuff. I know that they still sell packages on HSN, I think. But um, it's not a product I, I, I um, don't like. I still like it. I still use it. I just don't use it as often as I used to. So I hope that answers that question. So, Gloria, they used to have a problem with their adhesives because I must have had four or five rolls. And they told me to send them all back to them and they sent me new ones. So, yes, there was a problem with them. It does save a lot of time, yes. She never listens when we tell her. Oh, when you guys say use the tape. I know because I don't use it that often. <laughs> Simon gets Zyron boogers too. See? There we go. 
All right, so you can see I've only had the new mat on for an hour and it's already starting to lose its stick. Oh well. Oh well, all right. I think that's all I'm gonna answer for tonight. I only really wanted to go over that stuff, but I'm glad you guys asked me questions and shared your um, thoughts and opinions on everything. Um, I do appreciate you guys asking those questions because I never know, and I'm sure Simon can help me with this. Sometimes we just like, what do I do a video on today? Because I feel like I show you guys like sometimes the same stuff over and over again, and I don't want you guys to get bored of it. Or, um, so when you guys ask questions and make suggestions, that really helps us come up with fresh content to go over with you guys, or then we know what you like. So thank you so much, um, for that. And, um, I'll let you guys head back over to the FSC Facebook group and do your foil shopping to support Miss Laura. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all for now, folks. Be kind. Like I said earlier in the video, don't worry about things that are out of your control. If you worried about it yesterday, there's no point in worrying about it again today. Everything happens for a reason. You can agree to disagree. That's what makes this hobby so much fun is because we all have different styles, different ways of doing things. And just because it's not something that you like or that I like doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just makes us different. And that's what makes us humans. And let's embrace that. Bye, guys. Don't forget the thumbs up. Have a good night. Stay safe. Hugs to everybody.